become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, golden era bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about why organ meat is better than muscle tissue. Uh, continuing on the topic of old school bodybuilding nutrition with the focus on prebolics, today's topic is going to mainly be on the consumption of organ meats or offal as it is also called. When confronted with the choice of protein, most people unfortunately opt just to eat muscle tissue, either due to the person who's choosing the meat not knowing how nutritious organ meat really is, or because they are basically disgusted by the thought of it, by the thought of consuming uh, organ tissue. Little do most people know that the practice of eating organs uh, goes back millennia, and you can still kind of trace the consumption of offal or organ meats in traditional cuisines, be it in Europe, the Americas, Asia, or Africa. Our ancestors understood that organs were superior in nutrition than muscle tissue, and they really enjoyed it. But the practice has almost been completely lost, especially amongst athletes and bodybuilders who would actually benefit greatly from adopting this practice. In today's video, I'm going to showcase some studies which compare the nutritional profile of organ meats versus muscle tissue. And they also serve to prove how superior the nutritional profile of organ meats really is. And, and um, they do it very, very clearly too. And I do hope that you will find this video today useful and enlightening. Enjoy. Now the issue with, first I just want to state this, the issue with um, finding studies that compare organ meats to muscle tissue is that I have to admit not many studies have actually been done as far as I can see. And so I've had to scout, you know, scout through the internet and, and just try and find everything possible. So I've got some, a few studies, three in total that I'm going to display uh, today, starting with one going all the way back from 1926, which also references another paper from 1921. And the title of this particular paper is The Protein Value in Nutrition of Beef Liver, Beef Heart and Beef Kidney, with the focus really on looking at the biological value of protein found in organs and in comparison to beef muscle, which is what most of <laughs> most people would rather eat when considering the, the animal, right? Okay, so let's have a look. In the, uh, so again, as I said, the studies from 1926, and in the introduction, um, it actually references a, a paper prior from McCallum, Simmons, and Parsons. I think it's from 1921. And this particular study, again, referenced in, in, the, uh, in the introduction, states that the proteins of beef liver, and in particular of beef kidney, are superior in nutritive value to the proteins of beef muscle. So it's already talking about how superior the nutritional profile of these meats are. It doesn't necessarily address the protein value, which is what we're going to now look at. The results actually from this 1926 study um, showed that the nutritional, sorry, that the biological values for beef heart and beef kidney and beef liver were much, much higher, 10% higher actually than for muscle meat, as you can see, uh, only not even 70% for beef, but almost 80% for beef liver, beef kidney, and 74%, for, sorry, 74, yeah, 74 um, for beef heart. So these are percentages, of, uh, these percentages and biological values are way higher in organ meats than muscle meats, indicating that your body is going to absorb these much, much better. So this first study from, from very early on in 1926 uh, proves that the protein value, the biological protein value of organ meats is superior to muscle meat. Now, the next study I want to talk about is uh, from 2018 now, jumping uh, almost a century in front. Um, enhanced omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid contents in muscle and edible organs of Australian prime lambs, grazing, lucerne, and cock Coxfoot uh, pastures. Um, essentially, basically, this, this study is looking at um, the fatty acid content in muscle versus uh, organs, right? Edible organs of, of lamb, right? So we're going from, from beef to lamb, but the point is, uh, I just want to bring this point across about, in this case, we're going to look at the uh, fatty acid content uh, between these, uh, between organs and muscle. And, and the 
results are rather staggering when you when you compare them. The, the study basically found that um, if you have a read at the first line at the end here, the liver and kidney of grazing lambs were both good sources of omega-3. And this is very, very obvious when you look at the graph. I mean, this graph really shows you uh, that result very, very clearly. If we look at muscle at the very, uh, at the very far left, we can see that um, you know it's giving us about 45 uh, milligrams per 100 grams content of uh, fatty acids. Hard, would, I would say, is almost double that. Um, and, and of course, the, the two different um, pasture types that the lambs fed on are shown here in, in the different um, uh, grid, grid uh, type bars, right? So uh, on average, basically, they were the same. So the point really is that when we look at muscle, we can compare it with the organ. So we can see that heart, heart is giving you twice as much uh, fatty acid. Kidney is get, giving you about, yeah, easily four times that that uh, of the fatty acid content found in muscle and liver my god it's about 10 times it's just it's, it's a fantastic source of fatty acid so you can really see that overall organs are giving a a, a much better source of fatty acids than um than muscle tissue at least in this study that looked at uh, grazing lambs fantastic now here is a final study that i um came across from norway actually which compared the nutrients in muscle meat, liver, tallow, and bone marrow, right, from a semi-domesticated reindeer. A brilliant, brilliant study. Now, the study is from 2011, as I mentioned, from Norway, and it looked at the, um, the SAMI, the traditional SAMI um, consumption of, of reindeer. The SAMI people are a traditional people of, of um, Scandinavia and actually also I think are found in Russia. Anyway, they, they um, being traditional, as I mentioned before, many traditional cultures uh, still practice the consumption of, of eating uh, organ, sorry, still practice the consumption of, of, of organ meats, right? And so um, getting straight into it, uh, we see that in the methods, um, some uh, reindeer carcasses were selected from which meat, liver, tallow, now if you don't know what tallow is, it's basically a rendered form of fat, um, and bone marrow samples were collected, and selected vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, and, and total lipids were calculated. The results uh, for reindeer meat, uh, typical, I guess, of, of wild game, right? Wild game is known to be very, very lean, it's an excellent source of meat, by the way, so you don't always have to eat beef, chicken, or liver. Uh, sorry, beef, chicken, or, or, or uh, fish. Um, you can try game meat yourself if you, if you want to um, eat different types of muscle tissue. Game meat is fantastic because it's actually very, very lean. Um, usually higher in iron, too. Uh, the, me the meat was, of course, found to be a great source of vitamin B12, as all animal proteins are, are, are naturally very, very high in vitamin B12. And also, as, as mentioned before, as, just like here, excellent fatty acid sources, right? Now, um, the results are fantastic when it comes to organ meats. In most cases, the liver, tallow, and bone marrow had higher, and I mean way higher nutritional values when compared to meat. Now, I'm actually going to show you some of the tables from this study. The liver, of course, had the highest concentrations of vitamin A, all vitamin B types, vitamin C, iron, selenium, which is very important for testosterone production, and total amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids. Additionally, the liver was the only edible tissue that contained vitamins B9 and C. The vast majority of the vitamin concentrations in liver, tallow, and bone marrow were then correlated with meat. And let's have a look at the tables. We see the tables here uh, for mean vitamin concentrations in meat. That's the first column. Liver, the second column. Tallow, again, that form of rendered fat. And bone marrow. Uh, and we can see uh, as well the, the um, column for recommended daily uh, allowances for both female and males. And we can see that for vitamin A, when we compare it to meat, my God, look at liver. It's <laughs> it's ridiculously potent. 20,000, 20,000 uh, retinal activity equivalent, 20,000 versus just the 20 
of me. Just get that in your head. It is a thousand times greater. Of course, this is in reindeer. Uh, it's just insane. The liver truly is a superfood. Um, tallow itself was way higher, as was bone marrow. Look at uh, vitamin B1, 2, uh, B2, B3, all the vitamin Bs, as you can, as, as the study showed, it was liver is higher in in all vitamin Bs. Um, the other organ meats were not necessarily as high in uh, all the vitamin Bs. Liver definitely was superior. Vitamin C, again, only liver was found to have uh, vitamin C and, and at pretty decent levels. Uh, vitamin D uh, D2 wasn't actually uh, detected. Vitamin D3 also wasn't detected. And vitamin E, uh, basically liver matched meat. So a very, very fantastic profile for liver and a very decent profile for both tallow and bone marrow when comparing it to meat. So uh, definitely showing here that um, we've got some fantastic nutritional profiles for organ meats when we compare it to, to a normal muscle tissue. Now, I'm also going to show you the next table. I'm not going to show you the, the fats table because it actually goes well over a page long. Um, essentially, um, the fat profile I already talked about. So let's stick on to the uh, stick, uh, stick with the mineral concentrations. Uh, again, comparing meat, liver, tallow and bone marrow. This study, again, showed uh, although zinc was highest in muscle tissue versus liver, tallow and bone marrow, um, liver was way higher in calcium. Iron, look at iron. I mean, we're talking yeah, 13 times higher almost. And selenium as well. Uh, incredible profile again for liver. Liver is an absolute superfood, no doubt about it. Tallow had almost equal amounts of calcium, um, slightly higher iron, and a little bit lower on the selenium. Bone marrow, of course, had the highest amount of calcium, no doubt about it. Similar iron levels and low selenium. Again, there are some, the whole point of, I guess, talking about all these different studies is that I've tried to show, um, I guess, the nutritional profile of organs from different papers which highlight different facts. With, with, you know, here we've seen the mineral concentrations uh, are very high. Specific minerals, for example, like calcium or, or iron, are quite high in particular organs, right? Liver has very high iron and bone marrow has very high calcium, as an example. Uh, we've seen that liver is, is superior in, in vitamin content versus meat. When we look at fatty acids, again, liver, kidney and heart was very high in fatty acids um, when compared to meat. And again, the biological value of organ meats has been also really, really high. So the whole point of, of, of these uh, studies is that I, I have tried to show um, and back up what you hear or, or may read on the Internet. A lot of people, there's a lot of websites showing or stating, I should say, stating that organ meats uh, of high nutritional value, but I don't think anyone's ever really gone to, to this length, at least in a video on YouTube, to compare meat versus organ meat. So I do hope that this has rather been educational for you. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the subject of prebolics, I highly recommend getting on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com, where you'll find titles both from Vince Gironda and Rio Blair talking about Prebolics, the, the principle of prebolics. For example, Vince Gironda's The World Physique talks about many of his diets, not all of them, but many, along with the supplementation program uh, that is the prebolic supplementation programs. These are in The World Physique. And of course, if you want a full list of all of Vince Gironda's, Vince Gironda's diets that he ever wrote, uh, you can find that on my own book that I, that I actually wrote after researching all of Vince's diets, along with the pre-bolic supplementation. It's all in there on Vince Gironda's diets, uh, the book, uh, on my website, www.goldenerabookum.com. And you'll also find more on pre-bolics on Rio Blair's uh, book titles as well, all available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I know I've ranted on a little bit, but I really do believe in the consumption of organ meats uh, coming from a traditional background myself, a traditional South American background, actually specifically being Peruvian from an Inca background where I'm uh, in the practice of eating heart, liver, tongue, uh, pig's feet, pig's head, kidneys, you name it, tripe, everything. My mother fed me everything when I was small. And, I, you know, God bless her. I thank her for that because now I practice the same thing with my children as well. I'm trying to introduce them to other styles of, of eating. I think it's very important uh, because 
Although I admit that this, it's no fun killing an animal. You know, I'm not a, I'm not going to go ahead and lie about it. Um, although I am an omnivore, I eat meats, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, that's the way I was raised. That's the way my ancestors ate. I ate the same way. I also honor the killing of the animal. It's very important in our tradition. And I think it's very, um, it's, it goes beyond honoring the animal or tradition. It goes also with the fact that um, if you're going to kill an animal, then at least try and consume as much of it as possible instead of just throwing away uh, potentially nutritious meats um, simply because, you know, social stigma says it's it's uh, not fashionable or disgusting or whatever. Um, the whole point of this video has, has been to try and show you that indeed studies do back up the claims that organ meats are superior than muscle meat. And if you're going to actually go ahead and eat animal protein, then eat the whole animal. That's basically what I was taught. I remember growing up, going hunting with my uncles and, and grandparents, and once we would kill the beast, we would um, consume all of it, all of it. And that way, it's actually better for the environment uh, because you're not just consuming muscle. I mean, there's so much more to eat in the um, in the animal, in the beast that you're killing. Um, and of course, um, this goes back to, to ancestors. This goes back to the wild. Just have a look at what a lion does. If you look at National Geographic or any any uh, documentary like that, uh, at, you know, just have a look at what the lion does. The first thing a predator, just a, a predator in general, will do when they kill an animal is eat the organs first, especially the liver. Um, they'll drink the blood because this is the these are the bar, the parts of the of the animal that are that are meta highly metabolically, um, they, they, they consume a lot of the energy that you that you um, ingest from, from, from your normal diet. It all goes into the organs because these are the bits that keep you alive, right? So these uh, metabolically active tissues are highly nutritious because they have a very important role in the body. I guess that's the best way I can put it, right? They, they have these nutritional profiles because they play a significant role in the organism. And so this is why they are so nutritious. And I, I know I'm ranting on a bit, but I do hope that I've made that very, very clear. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, um, leave me your comments. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to support my research, the work that I do, please donate via PayPal. You can become a Patreon. Uh, you can visit my website for uh, old school bodybuilding routines, courses, out of print books and courses, as well as now I actually even sell some uh, nutrition books from the past. And you're going to find actually how to prepare organs in these cookbooks uh, because these books are, you know, go back a hundred years or more, right? And again, back then everybody used to eat organs and rightly so, rightly so, because they are very, very nutritious. Um, you can also contact me via email if you wish to collaborate. Once again, hope you've enjoyed this video and I continue talking about the, the topic of pre-bolics. Um, the consumption of organ meats and, and, and whole foods is very, very important. I do hope you're enjoying this series. Anyway, that's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now. To take full advantage of my affiliation with NSP Nutrition and Old School Labs, please visit their respective websites and use codes GEB20 or Bookworm12 to get a discount off their selected products. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.